Mobile app development is in a really confusing place. Tools like Flutterflow taught us that you absolutely can get an app into the app stores without knowing how to code, but Flutterflow sucks now. So despite being a Flutterflow ambassador and having worked with countless users navigating its learning curve, I'm done with it. But that's the thing, Flutterflow did have a learning curve and sometimes it was rough. Some of that frustration was just Flutterflow being Flutterflow, but a lot of it had to do with the very real fact that you still had to design a database, set up deployment pipelines, figure out App Store Connect, understand app state and parameters and so on. But hey, why don't we just pretend none of that is true and go use Lovable? Now, I don't want to seem like I'm hating on AI mobile app builders, you know, things like Base44 and Lovable and Retool and Flex app and Blink and Bolt and Super App PM and Mobilable and Avid and AppGen and Dreamflow. I have a point I'm coming to, I swear. And Natively and Vibe Code app and Rourke and Onspace and Kiki and Buzzy. There's literally one called anything. I love how well that sums up how ridiculously lazy this has all gotten. Might as well have just called it whatever. Oh wait, I do hate them. Anyone who has an app idea, in my view, has every right to be able to execute on it, provided they are willing to put the requisite work into it. Because that work is what gives you a real understanding of the product that you've built and how it fits into your business. The difference now is that you don't need years of formal training in software engineering to do it. And that's the difference LLM-based coding agents like Claude Code and Antigravity have given us. With caveats, but I'll get to those. The AI tooling has gotten really good and that does change things. For a long time, we've had developer tools that abstract away complexity, so engineers can move faster, tools like Firebase, but those tools have evolved a lot. And to be fair, there are an overwhelming number of them now. Writing code is only one part of building an app. And if you don't have a software background, it's very easy to miss all the other services your code is actually depending on. That's the trap that most people are falling into with AI. They think that they don't need to understand the architecture of their app anymore. The reason that there are so many AI app builder platforms is because they are incredibly easy to make now. They're basically just a shiny front end that makes the terminal and VS code feel less intimidating. That's literally what you're paying through the nose for in token credits, by the way, when you use those AI app builders. So I have an architecture. You don't have to use it. There are other combinations of technologies that work just as well if the system is designed properly. But this is the one that I recommend after many years of working in this space and seeing what tools like Flutterflow got right and what they got very wrong. My architecture is built on battle-tested technologies that power millions of applications worldwide, tech like PostgreSQL and Firebase, along with proven battle-tested abstractions on top of them, like Supabase. So here's how it goes. Supabase is the backbone of the app, and it's where you should focus your effort to understand what's actually happening. You'll use an LLM to work with Supabase, but at the end of the day, it's responsible for your users, your data, your security. So you need to know what it's doing and how to navigate it. On top of that, we add an API written in Python. The API talks directly to the database in a secure environment. This is where the complex logic lives. Don't worry about the specifics here. I will take you through this architecture and provide the templates and the steps. Just use the link in the description. Your Python API handles your business logic, which is anything that's specific to your app and can't be generalized or abstracted away by some service, but also the code that hooks up your Stripe subscriptions, sends emails, runs any LLM logic if your app is AI enabled. All of this lives in a safe, isolated environment and I think Python is a fantastic language to write it with. And by the way, this all happens on your laptop. You build new features, you do bug fixes, and you test it locally, completely isolated from your users. And then when you're ready, you push it up to production. It's all automated once you've set it up. So once the Python API is ready, you deploy it to Google Cloud Platform, which is free until you see any meaningful traffic. Your production secrets, like API keys, live in GCP secret manager and not in your code. Then far away from that safe and stable environment is the public realm, the app bundle. This is written in React Native and you can vibe code this part all you want. If it works, it ships. Obviously do your best to make it good, 
But the important part is that it stays quarantined from a security perspective. When that's firmly in place, the AI can go nuts all at once. But meaningful business logic doesn't belong here either. The React native code should, in a perfect world, be nothing more than a UI layer. Screens, pretty buttons, fancy images. When you separate your front end and back end like this, the AI agent won't start drowning in context as your code base grows. Expo then is a framework that sits on top of React Native. The nice thing about Expo and Expo application services is that you can develop locally, see changes instantly on your actual phone, and then let EAS handle builds and deployment to the app stores. And there's a free tier to get started. If you're doing a lot of builds and you don't like spending money, we can also rope in a build tool called Code Magic. I'll cover that in another video. Expo hooks into Firebase cloud messaging for push notifications. This part is straightforward to wire up. And all of this infrastructure is defined in code and that code lives in GitHub, which is also where many of the automatic deployments happen from. Now, I'm not expecting you to remember all of that. Instead, I want you to think about how much you'd trust an AI builder like Lovable to get all of that right. And then if you're still with me, I'd like you to think about how comfortable you'd feel with an app that's out there with real users and real revenue. And it's built on a stack with anything like this complexity, but you don't even know the names of the services. And trust me, you need all of this tech to make a real mobile app. It doesn't have to be this exact architecture, but this is the baseline for complexity. It really is. Your app's architecture is the place where you start. And the cool thing is that when you know how to wire all of this up, this architecture that I've shown you can be created almost totally free of cost. And when your app does start seeing traffic and starts consuming resources, this stack is still going to be the best value for money. So what do you think? Are you going to stick with AI builders for now? Do you prefer no code? Or are you interested in getting into an architecture like mine? Let me know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.